With the City Double Cash Card, you get 1% cash back when you buy and 1% as you pay. That's like the joy of getting two W's on the road. We're catching the home run ball without spilling your drink. Double boom. Double the love with the City Double Cash Card. Apply now at city.com slash double cash. Hour number two, it's Golick and Wingo here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Mike Golick Jr., Matt Barry filling in today for the guys. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests are going to appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And, listen, if you know Stephen A., you know he always has more to say. Not with us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. But now going forward, he's going national with the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio starting January 2nd. Weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN radio stations across the country and on the ESPN app, Sirius XM, and TuneIn Radio. So, lots going on there. May I say something real quick? Go ahead. Uh, eventually, by the end of the day, I'll learn to turn my mic on. That's okay. We, you know, they, Dad and Trey, as we've seen through the early portion of this show, have been doing it for quite a while. They can't even be yeah, bothered to turn it on. It's the big on button. I, uh, <laughs> I make my, my living here at ESPN over on the, on the sports center side of things. I'm on the, the morning sports center 7 a.m. I did not realize the manner with which you get treated over here on this program. In oh, the yeah. Morning. I was just coming back from the national break. There's a breakfast spread. There's coffee. Like what? Listen, where's this love on the TV side? It's it's shocking because we all assume we sit over here in radio every morning because this this is where I you know my bread and butter is really trade, from will. four to six a.m. over here. First this is last. this is a little yeah first yeah. and last four to six a.m. Monday through Friday. If you guys great program want to check that out, but. Over here, we look longingly at the TV side and say, man, they got the, the glitz and glam, the yeah, big don't. lights, the makeup. Don't. No? No, not only that, Hope, the wonderful makeup woman here, she came to me. Yeah. it's Listen, they've got a good thing going here. I'm just trying to draft off this. Like, the benevolence I am, of... I am over here for an hour every morning yeah. after first and last, and I have somehow parlayed that into free breakfast. So I'm just basically like a resourceful college kid. Like, it's just, it's remarkable. Just the treatment you guys get over here. Class, class, first class all the way. Who do I, t- like, do we have a boss that, that, that we can discuss this with that has, uh, you know, on both sides of the, both I'm, sides of the aisle, yeah, if you will, radio I'm not and sure, TV? I'm not sure who the crossover is. Yeah. If we need to talk right. to, you know, Marsha or Justin or someone here, if any of them are listening, which I doubt they are this morning, but on the off chance that they are, we need to get Matt Berry hooked up with this. I feel like now that you've, now that you've seen how this is, you can't go back to that. No, this is like, First class in Titanic, and we're over in stowage over there in TV where you have to pay for your food. Oh. Oh, God. They, a, they have, they've closed over those screen doors, and they've locked you guys there while the ship is going down. Yeah, if I could just get a sack breakfast from here on out, that's all I want. So if I could come over here in the Oh, morning. maybe we get you included on the show's breakfast here so you can just pick it up on the oh, way. Yeah, I don't want to share it with any TV people. Oh, God, I don't want no. them. No, 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 no. I just want my own. <laughs> let's let's, let's right. not get crazy. Sharing, that's for losers. No, we're, we're, we're not doing that. No, none the of that. The holidays are over. The sharing's done. Man, it, we, we got it all out of your system. Now we can all go back to being a little bit more self-centered. Selfish idiots, yeah. It's, 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 it's a nice, it's a good place to be. Good place to he- be here on Golik and Wingo, Matt Berry, Mike Golik Jr., and we will get you guys caught up on what was a busy world of sports while you were busy being other-centered yesterday and giving. There was also a ton of sports going on to help recap all that. We will get you up to date on what is trending. And what is trending off of yesterday, we mentioned earlier Kevin Durant and the Warriors beat LeBron and the Cavs 99-92. We had some controversial end-of-game no calls with Kevin Durant against LeBron, something KD spoke about after quite strongly. The key defensive play you made on LeBron was out of bounds uh, to the Warriors late in the game. There was a lot of debate on Twitter about whether that was a foul. When on Twitter? Did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, have you heard of it? <laughs> yeah, but did it feel clean? Did you get a replay of it like in your mind? Uh, I, it, it felt clean. It's probably the same play a bunch of those dudes on Twitter probably arguing about in 24-hour fitness that it, that wasn't a foul. So. They've been in that position before, but just not on Christmas at the Oracle Arena. So they know, they know if they ain't call it, it's not a foul. But I'm sure if they if if they get that call next week in 24 hour fitness, they're gonna be pissed that it was off that they, they called a foul. So keep that shit on Twitter. Wow. Funny, to, funny that he would say that because I'm sure Twitter's exactly where Kevin Durant wants all of this. Just be sure to switch to the right account. Can we? 
discuss something real quick. Does, do 24 hour fitness even have basketball gyms? That's what I was curious I didn't think about. They did. How did you land on 24 hour fitness? I feel like that's a little more bare bones. You're not going to get like the LA fitness treatment no, where you would have the league running pickup in there. 24 hour fitness is for the protein shakes and the potato chips and you're spotting each other and you're, 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 you're the guy grunting, throwing his weight around. We need and a, you're the gym perv walking her. That's what, isn't that what that's about? Can, can we, like, can we get Rosillo to call in? Cause I feel like if anyone's going to know where they're playing pickup leagues around here, yeah. We need to get Ryan. Actually, involved I know in that where he played his pickup league. Really, I do. That's that's got to be a competitive environment. Like I've it been, was. I've been around Ryan in the gym, and I can only imagine pickup hoops. Ryan is even another step up. It was at the JCC. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, that's... and they like they they play some hoops at the JCC. Yeah, you better not be calling any of these ticky tack fouls at the end of the game at the JCC. No, no, no. You got a lap and stretch before you play there. Exactly. He's too, as, as Kevin Durant said, too big for that. That's no foul. Yeah. So <laughs> that from KD there. We'll hear more from him later. Also trending, the Eagles clinched the one seed in the NFC after beating the Raiders 19 10 in a game that was offensively pretty abysmal to watch. A ton of turnovers in that game. The Eagles' worst offensive performance from this season by total yards, third down percentage, a bunch of different metrics, yet they have punched their ticket. They are now the one seed, first round by, home field advantage, all that good stuff, but with that asterisk of knowing that you are without your most important player for that run. If I gave you your gift card balance from the holidays, would you slide it all in? On the field or the Eagles in the oh, NFC? I, I mean, the the field. My worry is, will they win a game in the playoffs playing the way that we've seen the last couple of weeks? Look, what they did with the Giants a couple of weeks ago than what they did yesterday against the Raiders team that did not live up to their expectations. This is a quarterback league. We know this about the NFL. You don't just lose who at the time was the MVP of the league and Carson Wentz and just roll out of Nick Foles and go to the Super Bowl. With how Drew Brees has a running game now with Kamara Ingram, they play defense. The Rams have a lot of swagger with Gurley. It's going to be tough for them to get out of the NFC. It is. It's a it's a loaded division at top. We've talked about it in comparison to the AFC over and over again this year. I thought the Eagles, because of how spread out that team was, you don't really have a star in the receiving core. You've been able to spread that around. Zach Ertz may be your best offensive weapon. You've had a line that's been good, but we know is down probably their best player. And then a defense that's been able to overcome some of the warts in the secondary with Fletcher Cox and that group up front. But you're right, we've seen when you remove this one piece, we maybe didn't give him enough credit for the job that he was doing, buying time and making plays. I'm just there. not sure this is a Jeff Hostetler situation. Not going to work. Egos now. Not not quite. Ma- right a back up in there. This is definitely not the year for that, as you pointed out, no. with the amount of, of teams we've seen make this ascension into contention. That was what's trending. We have also... By the yeah, way, decided this is actually what's this, trending. This is truly, that's the sports trending. We've gotten to the important stuff now. Matt Berry's come in here this morning, and with him, we've decided that it's time to end the Christmas Story 24-hour marathon on two channels, by the way. Can't Thank hammer you. that home enough. And so we've asked you guys, at Golik and Wingo on Twitter, what movie could you watch for 24 hours straight? And the results have been compelling so far. We've had a lot of great suggestions. And Die Hard seems to be winning. I've got a couple for The Godfather that have weighed in via the Twitter. Die, Die Hard's the one, as you mentioned, invites a lot of Christmas controversy yeah, on its be, own. Yeah, I don't want to. We don't. Yeah, we've we've had that conversation too much. Travis, who's working with us uh, here today, offered up The Rock with Sean Connery. I, I'd, I'd go for that. I the, would add the the, the blueprint in my head. Exactly. I'd, I'd sign up. For Womack. That. The Gladiator. Gladiators coming in. Pulp Fiction. There are some good movies that that, that you could throw on a marathon. Exactly. Braveheart. These are all the movies. That's a little dark though. It, they, a little bit. All these movies have a little bit. The one I was going to throw out too is as far as a newer one because I'm always impressed with Elf that it's worked its way into the Christmas lexicon as quickly as it did, becoming a classic. But a newer one you could throw in this one that I watch every time it's on TV is The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger's Joker. Phenomenal. That Batman movie. I could, I, but it's not a stop and watch for me. Oh, really? Yeah, See, for me, that's every time I will, I'll commit to the rest of that one. Groundhog Day, I've seen twice now be mentioned. That would Twitter be a, for a 24 hour marathon. That's a perfect marathon movie because in and of itself, it's a movie about repetition. Okay. So here's one that, that I, Dino tweeted in and I'm going to give him uh, some credit for just a good variety of movies. Almost Famous. Oh, okay. Yep. Gladiator. Training Day. Training day. Like he's, he went 
all over the place for that one, but I like them all. You've covered a variety of genres, and to the point you made earlier, I don't why, know why we can't make this a rotating cast, so to speak. I don't know why year to year this can't be something that's up for grabs. And especially now, you went, to, to quote Gra- Gladiator, win the crowd, win your freedom. That's if it. you can take control and show that you're willing to listen to people and you are those networks and you say, all right, we'll pull you guys. We'll give the people a voice and that's the marathon you side on. I think you curry a lot of favor. We're going to help you out. We're going to find out how much power this show has because we're going to start it today, December 26th. We now have, what, 365 days? 364 more days till next year's hockey tryouts. It's got to toughen up. So we're going to, well done. We're going to, we're going to put this out there. We're going to get a new movie out there in the marathon. Man, this is, we're going to really test Golik and Wingo right now. We have hijacked their platform. We're going to try and use it for good. Some guy claims that because I'm from Arizona, I don't know what's real at Christmas. See, I as someone who has grown up most of my life in the Northeast, yeah. snow and the presence of snow does not define your ability as I bash my microphone to appreciate Christmas. I'll take that one step further. You know what I am stunned. This is my fifth winter here, fifth year here at, at ESPN. Thoughts and prayers. They don't put up Christmas lights in the Northeast. They don't. And the town that I live in, in West Hartford, you drive around, barely into Christmas lights. Oh, yeah. You go to Florida or Arizona... They're everywhere in people's lawns. Everywhere. Christmas you know, lights. Every, I haven't seen, maybe there's certain towns that just don't get into it because I'm getting weird looks at everybody from the control room, but I haven't seen Christmas lights here like I see in Florida and in Arizona. You know why? Because it's more fun to do everything when it's warm. Putting out Christmas lights is fun when it's warm. It's not when you have to go out there and you got to put on snow pants and boots and you're trudging through snow or it's 12 degrees and you've got to do it. I'm less inclined to do almost everything outside, including that. I thought this would be like the North Pole up here. Like there'd just be little elves running around people's front yards, lights, nothing, dark. We got a Christmas sweater on a chair over there. That's really about it. Was that, did, Kazir, did Kazarian wear that yesterday? No, we tried to bait him into that one. He was very straight laced yesterday. I, meanwhile, I wore a, a Christmas onesie. I essentially looked like if you had taken like a NASCAR pit crew member and then here we go now <laughs> made them holly and jolly. Oh, I'm looking wow. at one of the monitors now. Well, but think, come on, you're pulling up like the Griswolds from Torrington. Like, of course, there's going to be a one house example. For everything to combat my point. If you play the best of, of course, I, I'm i with you. It's a bit underwhelming, and I just I hate that idea. I'm the guy that looks at like a football game when people say football weather is Buffalo and Indianapolis. I'm like, why does football weather have to suck? Like, why can't we get normal weather in here that's good? Like, I, football weather for me is 72 and sunny. That's football, my football, football weather. Football weather to me is what's going to give you the best product on the field, and sometimes you just don't see that like Buffalo and Indianapolis a couple of weeks ago. We are going to see, though, the best of Baker Mayfield. Uh, when he plays in the college football playoff, and he made some news over the weekend that he was going to take part in the, in the uh, Senior Bowl. Which is something that we talk about how it's come up in the air, whether guys will play in the end-of-season bowl game or not. The Senior Bowl has also been one of those that, especially for the marquee quarterbacks, mm-hmm. the top-end guys, they've looked at and said, you know what, I don't really need this. And so for Baker, I think this just falls into more of the the folklore that started to build around this guy, which has been ultimate competitor, ton of edge to him, wants to go out and show you time and time again that he's the best despite having just won the Heisman Trophy, despite knowing he's got a chance to play in the college football playoff right now, that he's still itching for that. So this seems very on brand for me. First since Tim Tebow, first Heisman winner since Tim yeah. Tebow to participate in the Senior Bowl. And here's what I like about Baker Mayfield. And for those that are NFL fans that don't follow follow college football uh, as much as we do, this kid, from the second he was in high school in Austin, Texas, and wasn't getting recruited by the University of Texas and some of these other bigger programs, he's been on a prove-it mode from the time that he had to walk on twice, once at Texas Tech and then again at Oklahoma. You know that story by now. Yep. But th- you just put it perfectly. This fits what Baker Mayfield is trying to do. He is out to prove to everyone he is what you say he isn't. He wasn't a Division One quarterback for a big school. Okay, I'm going to go walk on and win the starting job at Texas Tech. I think he won freshman of the year in the conference yep. that year. Things fell out with Cliff Kingsbury. Ends up going to Oklahoma. Oh, I can't play at Oklahoma? Watch me. Oh, I can't win the Heisman Trophy? Watch me. Oh, I can't make the college football playoff? I'm going to do it again. And so for him to be able to say, the next thing on is, by the way, win the national championship, which I think that Georgia-Oklahoma game is going to be phenomenal. But now the next thing for him is, oh, I can't be an NFL quarterback? Watch me. 
And he's someone that's climbed really, really quickly towards the end of the season up draft boards, I think, through this process and through the last stretch of the season, has helped himself out a ton. It's an offense that we know has been productive with other guys in it, yep. and that goes back to Stoops. This year, it's been interesting, too, to watch, I think, the step that he's taken, because we all agree he's been a productive quarterback in the past, yes. but there appears to be a next level this season, and it's coincided with Lincoln Riley taking over a guy who, when he was the coordinator there, we all know the coordinator relationship and the co- uh, the position coach relationship, which is what they had, is a lot different than with the head man. And so you've got a guy that was right there every day with Baker when Bob Stoops was the coach, who's now the man in charge. And we saw him emotionally pleading for Baker's case earlier in this season. There's definitely a level of connection there that I think makes this season an interesting, more uh, more interesting look with that in mind. Over 4,300 yards passing, 41 touchdown passes. I was one of those in the preseason when we were talking about playoff contenders. I looked at what Oklahoma lost to the NFL. It was Joe Mixon, it was Samaji Piran, it was D.D. Westbrook. Yep. Those are three NFL offensive players that you're thinking, well, wait a second, if those guys are gone, how is Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield losing that production going to be anywhere near the college football playoff? Not only are they in the college football playoff, they're a better team than they had last year losing those three players, and that speaks directly to what Baker Mayfield can do. He's going to be one of those players through the draft process. We had David Pollock with us on SportsCenter a couple of weeks ago. He said that that he believed that Baker Mayfield should be the first quarterback off the board because of everything that goes into it. It reminds him a lot of Russell Wilson, the stature, but more importantly, the competitiveness and the willingness to want to win on every single play. That can be good and bad, but Baker Mayfield to go out there and put himself back in the new cycle prior to the college football playoff going into the Senior Bowl is exactly who Baker Mayfield is. And in a positive light, because we know this guy is not without his warts off the field during his time in college football. He had a few of those instances uh, uh, instances where, you know, brush up with the law, the instance at I think his brother's high school football yeah. game where he's going out on the field. Stuff that made you question maturity a little bit along the way. Even this year, we had some of the stuff, you know, the crotch grab that went on and things that people sort of bristled at a little bit, but that get written off as just a guy being competitive oh, after a while. You look, the immaturity's there. There's no question the immaturity is there with him. Because he gets so fired up and so caught up in the moment. There's that whole argument of is he just is he too passionate? Is he letting the passion get the better of him on the football field? But even the weekend afterwards, because you know, I do that Saturday and Sunday morning sports center. We had Feinbaum and, and Booger on with us every Sunday. And even they were the first to say, look, there's a difference between being competitive and acting like an idiot in the situation with a crotch grab against Kansas of all people. Yes. He was acting like an idiot. But there is no other quarterback, and I mean this, Rosen, Sam Darnold, anybody that's left in the college football playoff, there isn't a quarterback that I would rather be my teammate than Baker Mayfield. Not one. And I think that's what he's got to try to impress upon people going forward. I think that Senior Bowl venture is a part of it, but we know the offseason, once the season ends for college football and that offseason process begins at the draft for Baker Mayfield, it's showing people that I can channel that the right way. Because most coaches in a lot of different respects, I remember Mike, I went to training camp with the Steelers and Mike Tomlin would always say, I'd rather say woe than sick him. I'd rather have to pull right. you back a little bit because you are so ready to go. You are such a jackhammer with this process than have to try and goad you into showing more effort. You're never going to have to worry about that with Baker. It's can you put enough of a governor on this guy emotionally to where he can be the leader because at the NFL level, you're demanded at that position more often than not to be the franchise in a lot of different ways. The best quarterbacks in the NFL are the guys that basically serve as your coordinator and they help run meetings. They help put together the game plan during the week. They do all these things that require that level of maturity. And that's what I love as we you know bring it full circle with the bowl games today is Josh Rosen going to play is even going to be cleared from the concussion protocol. If you look at because when we when we got into the college football season, we said that this was going to be the year of the quarterback. Sam Darnold was the post boy. Josh Rosen, the kid, it used. To, I mean, there were Josh Allen at Wyoming. There were so many different quarterbacks that you could look to build your franchise around. You have to wonder one of these teams. Not that the draft order is getting close to being set. If there's a team in the top ten that needs a franchise quarterback, and Darnold, Rosen, and Allen are gone. Will one of them look at a player like Baker Mayfield who's undersized but has a lot of want in him? Are they willing to mortgage the future of their franchise on a player that seemingly has all the skills, but he's also a wild card? He is. He is, and it's going to be very interesting. Field Yates, I heard him say the other day in the NFL, 
he was taught as a scout, we draft traits, not production. Baker Mayfield has got an awful lot of production on his resume compared to what a lot of those guys have put up. That is a body of work that's going to be up there with any ones yeah. you'll see coming out, and it's going to be very interesting to see how NFL teams value that. We'll be we'll I think get back into some college football later. We've got the 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 bowl games coming up, the New Year's Day college football playoff final four that Baker Mayfield will be playing in. And some of what to look forward Yo, to. Marty in Smith that. joining us. Yes, Marty. Oh, party, Marty party with him. Party Marty is going to get us all set up for that. He's probably still wearing some NASCAR boxers this morning. I did see a lot of drinking motor oil. A lot of uh, people with matching pajamas. Those are really big on Instagram this Christmas. With who? Oh, with a with a listen. A lot of people in my timeline. Really? I I like wish couples. Couples, families. I'll show you some, a disturbing trend oh, in that regard of matching pajamas no, hard on down the road. I feel like Marty Smith is going to have the one pair of top to bottom matching pajamas that we can actually get. It's behind. like the Dale Junior logo. It has to, it has to yeah. be. So we'll see. We'll see if he has got his pajamas ready to go for later on in this show. We'll see if he can I, uh, come here and right the ship somehow on that. Because I can see the look on your face, and I'm very worried about what I'm about to show hard you. Hard pass on the matching pajamas. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I'm so happy, I feel like I can fly. Disclaimer, you will not be able to fly by switching to Geico. This is against the laws of physics and nature. If you find yourself flying, please seek professional and or medical help immediately. In the unlikely event you find yourself flying, you might be a superhero or a pigeon or a superhero named Pidge Woman who was bitten by a radioactive pigeon. If you are indeed Pidge Woman, Geico retains all licensing publishing rights in the event Pidge Woman the movie becomes a top-grossing Hollywood blockbuster. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Matt Berry, Mike Golick Jr. in today. Golick and Wingo filling in for the guys. Matt Berry in for Trey Wingo. Golick in for House Golick as he is every day on this program. Big day of NBA hoops. Christmas Day for that. It is leg day here on the bro program. Bringing in Tim Legler, our NBA analyst. And, and Legs, before I get to the NBA, I have a serious question I have to ask you. I'm trying to bring down a Christmas story in the marathon they make you watch every year on two different networks. Are you a fan of this movie, yes or no? <laughs> it's, so, it's so ironic you're asking me this question because I had this conversation with my wife yesterday because she, my, my wife, when Christmas starts, which for her is the day after Thanksgiving, uh, we have nonstop on every TV in the house pretty much something Christmas themed. That is unless I can sneak away into like my office or to the theater in the basement and, and watch some sports. But Christmas, car- uh, Christmas Story was on nonstop oh. yesterday. I am not a big fan of the movie. I will say I, I've grown to appreciate it a little bit more in recent years, I guess. But it's not something I'm like dying to see or look forward to or enjoy nearly as much. Okay, good. This it sounds like Legler's on my movement. All right, so he's all he's all in on the movement here to get it going. Although I'm with him. Listen, there's part of me that appreciates the fact that Ralphie dealt with the bully with his hands as opposed to Kevin McAllister, who had to use every trick in the book on this one. A much more direct course of but action. The game planning that Kevin McAllister did was spot on, stuck to the process. Uh, let's talk NBA <laughs> now uh, with, with Legler. And, and look, Oklahoma City has now won five straight games. And Russell Westbrook said it after yesterday's game that we're starting to learn how people are going to defend us. Legs, if this team figures it out, how dangerous are they in the West? We are down to legs. Oh, we have lost. We have lost our legs for today. It's a shame too because your leg day joke was great. Really appreciated that. Yeah, I, but. I, I had that one ready to go, and he was so enamored by the debate. Maybe the gods of Christmas past. Dude, maybe this is Christmas story battling back against us. We've been railing against it pretty hard this morning. I also know that we we've, we've got some allies we need to get involved in this uh in this war against the Christmas story too. I love too that 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 this is an actual conversation he had with his wife. Cuz she appears from, yeah. from how it sounds the second Thanksgiving's over She's ready to go. Like, she's Christmas everything. Well, I think for her, she's probably trying to make this time of year her own because isn't Legs, if I'm not mistaken, a big Halloween guy? Well, he's, he's back. Let's ask him. Legs, is this, is this true? You are the, you are the big Halloween connoisseur around here, right? 
Yeah, I apologize for that, by the way. All right, yeah, have, yes, Halloween is we take it to a whole other level. We do we do something similar for Christmas, but Halloween is sort of taking on a life of its own now because it's gotten a little bit of attention. Um, Dan Lebitard kind of got involved in that a few years ago, and now that has taken on a life of its own. Um, and we've had it now go over the top even further with Halloween. But we go we go all in on Christmas too, man. We're just a pretty much a festive household that really gets into any sort of holiday. Well, there's certainly reason to celebrate yesterday with the NBA slate we had on legs. I don't know if you heard the question prior uh, to us getting disconnected, but the the Thunder have won five straight. Russell Westbrook said after yesterday's game that they're starting to figure out how teams are defending them. And if they get this thing figured out, they could be one of the better teams in the league. I'm curious, how potent could this team be if these three start to figure out how to play with one another? It, it, well, it's been a serious roller coaster with this team for me because early in the year, I, I was convinced that this team could be anywhere from a, probably a three to a five seed. And then when I started to watch them night in, night out, and their inability to get good quality shots for themselves in, in close games, I started to think maybe this is what it was going to be because from beginning of the season until about two weeks ago, I didn't see anything different out of this team. Um, I saw guys rely on individual great shot making, a lot of tough, difficult, contested, one-on-one type of possessions. It just doesn't win consistently in this league. So then I started to think, you know what, maybe this team is really more like an eight seed and they're going to get housed by Golden State or Houston in the first round. Well, what they have done lately, and I saw it yesterday again in, in watching the fourth quarter of that game, they are now starting to get better shots for themselves on the most important possessions of the game. And I saw a couple great examples of it yesterday. Early in the year, you know, Paul George, he makes a huge jumper late in that game. I think he gave him 108, and, and that would have been a contested three at the beginning of the season, or even two weeks ago probably. Instead, yesterday it's a pump fake gets a guy off his feet, gets to about 15 feet pull-up jumper, a much more uh, consistent, reliable shot under those circumstances. Next possession, Russell Westbrook comes down. He's got the ball at the top of the key. I thought he was going to pull a three with a hand in his face. He gives it up, gets it back, and now I think, okay, now he's going to pull that three. Instead, he goes off the dribble against Eric Gordon and gets to 15 feet for that pull-up, you know, elevate jumper that he takes. That's an almost unstoppable shot. So their willingness to get better shots in the most important possessions in the game has improved. And now I start to look at this team from a talent standpoint, and you go, wow, you know, this might be, when it's all said and done, maybe this team is a three seed uh, or a team that maybe if you get to that four or five spot is a really scary second-round matchup for whoever finishes with the number one. Talking to Tim Legler, ESPN NBA analyst on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And Tim, on the other side of the court, we know offense is never going to really be an issue for a Mike D'Antoni outfit, but for this Houston team, based on what you've seen so far defensively, is there any cause for concern? Uh, well, here's the thing. They, they added some guys in the offseason. They added P.J. Tucker. They added Bamute. Clint Capella is a legit defender. Trevor Reza can defense. The thing I like about this team now is they don't just have one way to beat you. It, you know, over the last couple of years, and last year particularly, that great offensive show they put on all regular season, that was the only way they were going to beat you, and it was a matter of time before they played a better team over a two-week stretch like the San Antonio Spurs, where they're going to be able to now take some of those things away. They're going to be able to really tighten up how they play that high ball screen with James Harden, because that really is what you're talking about with Houston Rockets. They're the only team in the league that can run one set the entire game and beat you. So if you have a chance to just hone in on one team and lock in on how you're going to trap that, defend it, rotate, you can now make that set less efficient. Uh, and that's the only way they can beat you. But now they actually have another way. They can get physical with you. They can scrap. They can come up with 50-50 balls because they've added some of those blue-collar type of guys. Now, look, at the end of the day, this team shoots 43 threes a night. So a lot of their, their success is going to depend on how many of those are they going to make. Are you going to be able to limit their effectiveness from there? But at least now if they go through droughts, they can hang in there by stringing together some stops. That wasn't the case a year ago. So I think their prospects in a seven-game series against San Antonio or Golden State or Oklahoma City, whoever it may be, I think are much greater this year than they were a year ago. Cavs, Warriors, one of the headliners yesterday, and as we've seen with these teams, especially in their in their three consecutive meetings in the finals, they can get a little bit chippy. 
What did you make yesterday of how this game ended and what we're seeing out of Kevin Durant this year, who seems to be playing with a little bit more of an edge than we've seen him play in the past? Yeah, I actually think Kevin Durant was an underrated defender in Oklahoma City, and now he's getting a lot of credit for his defense because the shot, the, the block shot numbers are up. So automatically now people are gravitating toward him somehow discovering that he can be a, a two-way player. He's always been that to me. I've always thought he was an underrated defender. Now it's just he's on a team that gets so much attention and so many more high-profile games that he has an opportunity to, to, to come up with some blocks and key defensive plays, and he's getting a lot more credit than he did before in Oklahoma City because it's impacting on winning in a greater way. Uh, you know, he, He's the guy that's changed, I think, his persona since he left Oklahoma City. I think the fact that for the first time in his life, he had people coming at him because of the decision that he made. It's changed him a little bit. I think there is more of an edge to him. He's a little bit grumpier. Uh, some of the things that come out of his mouth when he does interviews are, you know, are, are a little bit different. You bleep it out stuff. That wasn't Kevin Durant in Oklahoma City. I think he's, he's changed now by understanding that, you know what, you can't please everybody. And as a result, he he's, cares less about that. And I think it's, in the long run, he's going to be better off for it. Um, particularly in the big moments on the big stages. He showed it in the finals a year ago, how he can elevate his game by, by, by getting that laser focus. He did it again yesterday. I thought the way the game ended, though, that, that for being honest about it, he got fouled. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say that, hey, that's the reason that the Golden State Warriors won the game. But if you're asking me to look at the replay, I'm evaluating, I'm saying, yes, he got, LeBron James got fouled. He wasn't able to extend his arm up to the rim because Kevin Durant reached across his body and hit him right in the middle of the elbow. And you can't extend your arm if that happens. And so, yeah, it's a foul. And I thought LeBron, he really could have maybe been called a foul in the other one on the left wing when he lost him out of balance. He, he did reach across his body, forced some contact. LeBron loses his balance, and it's a big turnover. So Kevin Durant got the benefit of the doubt in both of those situations, and LeBron did not. And I think that is pretty telling when you look at this individual matchup. Durant said he thought the torch was passed last year in the finals. When you see plays like that happen at the end of the game and KD gets the benefit of the doubt, particularly when you're talking about physical contact because he's so slightly built, LeBron doesn't. It was very interesting to me. Um, but I don't think anybody could look at that and be honest about it, unless you're a Cavs fan, and say that that was not a foul, enough contact to merit the call. But LeBron James came up empty on both of those trips. Yeah, pay, playing by the 24-hour fitness defensive rules will uh, will get you some of those calls down the stretch. Uh, Legs, before we let you go on the Cleveland side of things, we know Christmas Day is big for the NBA, but we know going forward the Cavs still have a lot to look forward to. In January last year, LeBron asked for a playmaker. He may get it at some point soon with Isaiah Thomas coming back from injury. How long do you see uh, that taking, knowing how Isaiah Thomas's game works to really assimilate with this team? Yeah, it's, you know, here's the thing. And I, they kept showing Isaiah Thomas on the bench a lot yesterday. He's over there with that Cheshire Cat grin because that tells me he's getting really close and he can't wait to get out there and help because he's exactly what this team needs. Right now, everything that they create offensively is because of LeBron. They just don't have any other offensive generators. I mean, Dwayne Wade has been that throughout his career. He's a Hall of Famer, and he's created a lot of offense in his career. It's not really – capable of doing it at that level at this stage of his career. And outside of, of him, they really don't have another guy on this roster that can do it. And you're seeing that. When you play the better teams, that's when it really comes out, particularly a team as good defensively as Golden State. So now you bring Isaiah Thomas into the mix, and when LeBron James now gets doubled or he gives the ball up and that ball comes around the horn, two passes, ends up on the other side of the floor – well, now there's an elite offensive player over there that can run ball screen, that can, that can hurt you from the three-point line, that can just go attack against a defense that's shifting from the other side of the floor, running at you. And that's just such a critical element in the NBA. LeBron has sorely missed it. The question I have, though, that has to be answered, can Isaiah Thomas be comfortable playing as much as he's going to have to with, with the ball not in his hands? Because last year... We fell in love with the guy in Boston, but the truth of the matter is everything was catered to him offensively. He did whatever he wanted. It was in his hands the entire game. Every possession up the floor, he had it. That's not going to be the case in Cleveland, and that's why I have so much respect for Kyrie Irving because that's not an easy thing to do for point guards that have had the ball their entire life on every team they've played on. Kyrie figured out how to average 25 points a game in that setting and be able to thrive on the biggest stage in the NBA Finals. 
can Isaiah Thomas also do that? It's going to take time once he comes back, but he is exactly the type of offensive player that LeBron is craving right now, and we won't really know the ceiling for this Cavs team until he comes back, because clearly right now, Golden State is still on a different level than the Cleveland Cavaliers. Maybe Isaiah Thomas helps bridge that gap. Tim Legler, our ESPN NBA analyst. Legs, we appreciate the time as always, man. Enjoy it, guys. Take care. Thanks, Legs. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. That voice is Matt Barry. I'm Mike Golick Jr. We're filling in for the guys today here on Golick and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. As always, you guys can tweet the show at Golick and Wingo at MGolick Jr. 57 or at Matt Barry. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. And all phone guests like Tim Legler, who just joined us, appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And it's been a busy morning so far for us. Yeah, and it's amazing. Like we had great NFL yesterday. Yep. We had some some playoff situations get locked up in row one seat in the NFC. Uh, Steelers host getting a bye in the first round of the playoffs. Great NBA. Yet the one thing taking the show by storm is a movie and a pajama trend. Yeah, disturbing Christmas trends because, to your point, we can kind of take a collective breath now after that holiday season where we're forced to put our own interests aside yeah, and think about fake. everyone else. Yes, everyone's faking it for the most part. You've got to go out here and try and pretend like you're not motivated by your own self-interest. Travis, who works on our show, is a perfect example. He brings us in the tweets that we read from the 100 Flowers Twitter feed and put one of his own tweets directly at the top. But Allie, our producer's tweet, was nowhere to be found on that because Travis only cares about himself, and that's okay. But yesterday or prior to that, because oh, it's the holiday yeah. season... Then it wouldn't. It would have been about everybody else. Exactly, it would have been all about the others. So people being themselves again, finally in the holiday season, we will, uh, you know, get back to more of those. I think because the pajama one is one you're particularly hot on now. This one surprised you because you weren't aware this was going on. I did not know it was a thing where people are now wearing matching pajamas, taking pictures of them, and putting them out there. Yeah, and people use their kids as a prop in this one because they get them for the kids to start off with. But really, this is just about parents, I think, wanting to wear pajamas again and not have to get we, dressed. Can we stop with this stuff? Can we? Pa- parents need to stop doing a few things. One, using social media. And two, using emojis with every text. Ooh, see, you you're fighting a losing battle there because people my age have started to become parents now, and since we have co-opted age everything limit. else, age limit. Oh, okay, so you want to? Yeah. You want there to be a certain cutoff on this one? Yeah, like fifty and above. All right, that you know, listen. I'd, I would be, I would be more than fine with instituting some sort of a ban on this one and trying to say after a certain amount of time period, we've really got to limit your usage. Because once the parents got into Facebook, forty-five and above, it's done. 